What's up, people out there in YouTube land? Welcome to another fresh take and another review that we have for you tonight. I got with me Vicky from Fangirl Review. Hi, everybody. Happy to be here. Okay, so if you don't know, um, the CW in DC, every year since The Flash has been on, they usually have an annual crossover. Um, it's been getting bigger every year. The first one was with just Flash and Arrow, which wasn't really a crossover, just both of them guest starring on each other's shows. Last year <laughs> was a pretty big crossover as it brought in a whole new show. And this year's crossover um, brings all of those shows together with the addendum of Supergirl to take on a threat. Now, before I get started, I will say this. CW, y'all pulled a fast one. Y'all got us. Y'all really did. I mean, because that Supergirl episode really wasn't part of the crossover. <laughs> <laughs> so That was a joke. The, I'm watching, because I don't watch Supergirl, and I'm watching, and I'm watching, <laughs> and I'm watching, and then <laughs> it was such a CW move that all the most important things happened in the last two minutes of the show. I'm like... CW, you always do this to me. <laughs> they got everybody. Like, oh, they got everybody because they made it seem like Cisco and Barry was going to show up in like the midpoint of the episode. No, mm-hmm. it no, was literally the last fifty seconds the of the episode. <laughs> the literal last fifty seconds of the episode. They timed it on YouTube. <laughs> it's fifty seconds. Not only do they do that. They show the exact same scene in Flash the next night. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, y'all so, jerks. <laughs> so you, you, you got us, CW, you got us. So I'm hoping next time, next year, you actually have her as part of the crossover. You can't keep, you can't sit there and say you have this epic four-night crossover when really it's a three-night crossover. <laughs> well, it's three nights and 50 seconds. Yeah, three nights and 50 <laughs> seconds. I'm like, dude, this had nothing. Now, it would have been different if they would have brought, like, um, from the Supergirl side, they brought like Alex and Win with her, but they didn't bring nobody but her. And that would have that would have worked. Have all yeah. the geeks behind the hero tech support, be tech support. All the geeks <laughs> be tech support. Mm-hmm. But they didn't do that. <laughs> so this wasn't really a four night crossover. It was a three night crossover when you actually think about it. Especially since they put the the fifty seconds that Barry Zisco showed up was actually in the Flash. Yeah. So. I'm going to call this the epic three night crossover <laughs> because that's what it was. Um, guest starring Supergirl. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> guest starring Supergirl because that's pretty much what it was. Uh, basically, and this all starts in the Flash episode. Um, they do this whole 10 hours earlier deal um, where you get like the end of the episode at the beginning type situation. But apparently, uh, still reeling from the fallout of the previous Flash episode where Caitlin pretty much goes Killer Frost and pretty much outs everybody and causes <laughs> a big rift uh, between Cisco and Barry. And I just want to go on and go on record as saying this. CW, you did it. You made me hate Cisco. <laughs> yep. You made me hate one of my favorite <laughs> characters across all your shows. You made me hate him. I never thought I would dislike Cisco, and then you make it like, well, now now I dislike Cisco. Yeah, I'm still, still Team Barry. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, dude, I hate, I hated Cisco. I've hated Cisco for the last three weeks. Like seriously, like I don't like him. I don't even, I, I, I can't deal with when he comes on screen. I'm like, man, he's gonna start bitching and whining again. I'm like, th- this is not Cisco, who pretty much single handedly saved episodes of Flash and Arrow. <laughs> This is a Cisco I don't want to be around. Yep. So, yeah, uh, congratulations. You, 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 you got me with the whole Fortnite crossover, and you got me with Cisco. <laughs> that being said, they think a meteorite is crashing towards Central City, and it comes to find out when Flash gets there, it's an alien spaceship, and we get our first look at the Dominators as they foul out, running to do whatever it is they're going to do. Of course... Barry, knowing that he needs help because he doesn't know what to do with aliens, he goes to get An Oliver. <laughs> yeah, basically, he he goes to get his he goes to get Oliver. Of course, you know now when they realize that they're up against that, they in turn call 
the legends. And that's when, of course, Barry goes and gets Supergirl with a very pissed off, uh, whining Cisco in tow. And they figure out, okay, we're going to fight the Dominators. Now, the whole episode as a whole, I thought was just okay. The fight sequences were, were great. Um, the, the, the fight sequences in the Flash episode were great. The problem was Cisco. He brought the entire episode down for me. He's just so annoying. Like, I understand, like, his brother's dead, and it's, like, it's messed up because, you know, Barry went back to try to, to save his family, but in doing so, he killed mine. I understand that. But what you need to recognize is finish the sentence. Finish the whole thought. But Barry then turned around and watched his mother get killed on his word. He said, this is wrong. My mom has to die. So he lived a happy life with his mother and then had to choose to kill her again. So, <laughs> like, finish the whole thought. And I don't think Cisco was doing it. Like, he basically ordered the hit on his mother it, to the, make things right. Yeah, the, the problem with the whole Cisco thing is, and they don't do a good, and I've been complaining about this as far as his storyline and Flash this season. If you watch the first two seasons of Flash, his brother was a dick to him. Mm -hmm. To the point where his brother was basically unlikable. And to all of a sudden have Cisco be like, Oh, I care about my brother. I love my brother. I'm like, dude, the stuff your brother did to you that we have seen would be like, you would think he'd be happy. I'm sorry. Yeah. Just the way his brother acted toward him. So we haven't seen an on-screen version of Dante that was supportive nice. or even likable. Yeah. Like, so if you're gonna sell us that in this world, I guess Dante was a good guy to Cisco, then you need to uh, actually say that. Because right now, oh, sure. we only know the mean Dante. Yeah, we don't we, know a good Dante. Yeah, we haven't seen him. So I'm still thinking about, you know, for lack of a better word, asshole Dante. And I'm like, dude, why are you mad? You know, <laughs> I, that's what I'm saying to myself, watching, watching him complain the whole time. So, of course, Cisco, during the course of that episode, basically tells everybody about Flashpoint, even though Oliver said, look, we got to focus on the task at hand, which is stopping the Dominators. Yeah. Cisco takes it up upon himself to tell everybody. Of course, everybody, well, everybody outside of Supergirl and Oliver gets mad at him. Gets mad at Barry. Now, the thing about this episode is you have to pay attention to it because Legends of Tomorrow, the, the Legends of Tomorrow episode is very funny as to why the <laughs> Dominator show up. And, of course, this is going to be spoiler filled. So if you haven't had a chance to watch, you can go on the CW uh, website. You can actually watch it there or the CW app. But <laughs> it all comes full circle as because everybody thinks it's all Barry's fault from what he did at the beginning of season three of Flash. And it really ain't. So after... You know, they go without um, Barry and Oliver. Like the, the best part of that whole episode, in my opinion, was the heart-to-heart -heart that Barry and Oliver had. Where I was like, dude, if I was in your situation, I would do the same thing, which to me is a normal response to that, as opposed to the whining that Cisco was doing. Because mm -hmm. if you saw your parent, because he had, ba Oliver basically telling him, dude, I had to do the same thing. I had to watch. My mother get killed in front of my face and I couldn't do anything about it, which is exactly what Barry had to sit up and do again. So he had to watch his mother die twice. Because well, it's, not, it's season, more than just watching his mother die. He had to he had to order the man who kills his mother to kill his mother. Yeah, just because that dude's a, a sadistic prick. But <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. to set things right, he had to order his mother's death. Yeah. And he did it twice because at the end of the first season. He had to sit there and watch it. And then at the beginning of this season, he had to order it and watch it. Yep. <laughs> so it's it's one of those situations where you like, if you are in the man's shoes, you kind of understand. And on top of that, if you've been following Flash the whole season, he apologized to it profusely already. Even though he knows he can't really go back and do anything about it, he has already apologized to everyone in that entire on that entire team. And I'm like, dude, the, the way that they were acting either they should have showed us 
a better Dante, an episode that in, that involves a better Dante, or they just shouldn't. Have, he should have got over it quicker. But action wise, I thought the episode was okay. Um, any final thoughts on that episode before we go to Arrow? No. Okay. Now, at the end of the Flash episode, all the Arrow characters get um, kidnapped onto the alien spaceship. And by all the Arrow characters, I mean Thea, uh, Dig, Oliver, and they even got Sarah and Ray. Um, now, this episode is the episode where I don't think... <sighs> okay, DC said that... Uh, well, CW and DC made a joint statement after the, the Wild Crossover was going on that, like, um, the Supergirl episode and the Arrow episode were kind of tricky to, to to pull off because one, the Supergirl episode, they wanted to keep in line with what was going on since that episode was actually their mid-season finale. And the Arrow episode was actually episode 100. In my opinion, they should have gave everybody an extra episode. Like, they should have gave them two shows an extra episode so they can actually be a part of the crossover um, more in depth, in my opinion. Because the Arrow episode went back and brought back a whole lot of other older characters. Um, the parents came back. Uh, they brought back uh, Laurel. And they did a good job of bringing them in, but I think it went on a little too long. And I understand why they did that, because it was their 100th episode. But at the same time, I'm like, dude, we don't, we still don't know jack about Dominators. We just didn't at that point. We just knew they were pissed off and they were going to do something. We knew nothing about them at all. So the entire episode is basically, well, the majority of the episode is basically um, the Arrow characters being in a kind of prison made up of what their life would have been like type deal. And while interesting, interestingly enough, it showed some actually good acting from um, Stephen Amell and Willa Holland who played Thea and Oliver. I just really, I'm like, dude, this is going on too long. At like the 30 minute mark, I'm like, this is way too long. They should have been wrapped this up. But on the flip side of that, we got, uh, Flash and Supergirl showing up, and they meet team the Arrow team, the the new guys anyway, which was a, a nice little fun little thing. Even though that went over way too quickly, especially with the whole wild dog hates aliens and metahumans, they just wrapped that up too nice, in my opinion. Do you agree? Well, going back to the Arrow episode and explaining about the Dominators and not knowing about them yet. Um, to me, that didn't bother me. I was fine with that. Um, I know, like, Jay, you're more focused on why don't they focus on the monsters. That's always what you bring up Yeah. with the movies and stuff like that. No. Ah, <laughs> whatever. If you tell, if the story li- if the story is good enough, I don't care if I only know just a little bit about the monster. They defeat it and we move on. That's That's really fine with me. Okay. Well, what about that uh, whole, uh, the, 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 well, let me ask you this, the, the, the Supergirl Flash part, parts of the episode, even though it's on like two parts, some of that just kind of felt a little like, okay, we got to put an action sequence in. Well. Kind of. Because I know they were trying to talk, they were trying to do the whole, you know, we got one team member that hates uh, metas and aliens, but I'm like, yeah, but that that is not something that you wrap up in two minutes because they saved you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's just it doesn't it doesn't happen like that. Oh, I hate metas and, and aliens. Oh, they saved me. I like metas and aliens. I mean, <laughs> it, it'll be a little bit more deep seated than that. I would think. <laughs> I would just think it would be a little bit more deep seated than that, in my opinion. I mean, I. It, that part just didn't feel right to me. Now I did like the the end of the actual uh the actual illusion they were in when they had to face off against like people from their past. Like uh Willa had to face off against the illusion of Malcolm Merlin. Uh Oliver had to face off against an illusion of Deathstroke. Um Sarah had to face off against an illusion of Damian Dark and Ray and uh 
Dig had to face off against, I guess, mercenaries. I guess I, I don't, I, I wasn't paying attention to those get those dudes, but they were just army fatigue dudes, basically. So that part was actually okay to me. That that part was okay. Um, like I said, I, and I said this in my blog post. I did like. I did like seeing um, Katie Cassidy's Laurel again. I didn't realize how much I actually missed her until she was gone. And I'm like, dang, I kind of wish she could come back now. <laughs> but I mean, it is what it is. It was it was cool seeing her though. On the, all in all, I thought it was just an eh, episode. But for people who've been invested in like every season of Arrow and are deeply rooted in, I can see why. They would probably love it. Me, I was just, I was just okay with it because I was like, I, I want to see more of the aliens. At, this, <laughs> at that point, any final mm-hmm. thoughts on that episode, Vicky? On the Arrow episode? Yeah. No. All right. Mm-hmm. Now we get to my favorite episode of the entire crossover, the Legends of Tomorrow episode. Now, um. My favorite character out of this, out of all four shows, the whole thing so far has been Mick Rory's heat wave. This dude is off the chain. <laughs> he says some of the most irreverent stuff, and it's just hilarious the way he, the delivery goes. But this episode, they actually get back to the actual threat at hand. And uh, the episode starts out with, um, because the, the Arrow episode does end with, the Legends Wave Rider ship actually saving them from an entire uh, squad of Dominators trying to blow them out of the sky. So they get saved. They come back down to Earth and come to find out that the Dominators have been there before in 1951. And they they decide to go kidnap one and interrogate it. So uh I forgot the guy's name, but the guy that plays Steel, he takes um, Amaya and Mick, Vic, Vixen and Heatwave, along with Cisco and Felicity, to go capture a alien from the 1951 um, uh, attempt and interrogate it. Well, some stuff goes wrong, like we know they're going to go, and we get to meet the men in black, basically. Mm-hmm. That part was kind of... All right, you know, shadowy government agency, cliche, guy with glasses, cliche. Um, <laughs> it, it was kind of a very cliche moment, but the significance of that is, once again, Whining Cisco is um, basically outed by F- Felicity. They basically, Felicity says everything that we've been saying, which is basically like, dude, he didn't kill your brother. Stop acting like that. You're being stupid when we like, got a full-on invasion happening, to which, of course, Cisco does some more whining, <laughs> in my opinion. But the significance of that is that when they go to actually save uh, Vixen, Heatwave, and Steel from the Men in Black, he actually convinces them to release the Dominator that they take in captive and let him go back to his uh, mothership. And therein lies the problem. It is actually Cisco who's the cause of all of this. <laughs> The entire crossover, the, the, the entire invasion was basically Cisco's fault because that Dominator was never meant to leave. He wasn't supposed to leave, but Cisco convinced him to let him go. And of course, he comes back and he comes back in a very uh, non agreeable manner, I guess you could say. Now, while this is going on in the past, in the present, Flash, Arrow, Adam, and Canary meet the men in black who, you know, have now the, the leader guy who they don't never really say by name. You just know him by his glasses basically shows up and tries to, I guess you want to say kill him, I guess. I don't know what he was trying to do. Just tell Honestly. Barry to turn himself over. Yeah, but you can't tell somebody to turn, turn themselves over when you got a sniper trained on them. <laughs> That that was that was the weirdness of that. I'm like, how are you gonna get him to turn it over? I guess he negotiated him dead or alive. I guess um, that part basically leads to Barry being like, okay, I got a choice. I gotta turn myself over now. Uh, by this point, the Wave Riders back. Cisco them. They, they're all back, and 
Cisco realizes he tries to contact the Dominator, which he does. And the Dominator pretty much says, look, look, I'm going to spare y'all lives because y'all spared me. But everybody else, if Barry don't turn himself over, y'all going to have to die. That's basically <laughs> how he puts it. So Cisco, once again, um, when they find out that he, that's who they want, Barry, they contact the alien again and then come to find out that, you know, they were planning on doing that anyway. It wasn't a a uh, peaceful. There was never going to be a peaceful negotiation with them. They feel like that they have to put it into the all metahumans before. And I don't understand how this was going to happen to affect them. But they was like, we have to take you out before y'all become the scourge of our kind. I don't understand that. I'm like, how can them being on Earth cause a scourge for you? Unless you're trying to come take it over. Which is the only thing I got out of that. But of course, Barry's going to try and turn himself in. Cisco, everybody gives a passionate, emboldened, no, you're going to stay. We ain't going to let you do this thing. And of course, Cisco says, You're my friend. Cisco, I still hate you this season. So that's not going to work. Um, then we have our big Avengers esque moment, action moment, which is actually pretty fun to watch on TV. I have to give I have to give them credit for that. That was actually a pretty fun scene to watch, um, with everybody getting to show off their abilities and whatnot, and um, actually save come through and save the day, which is actually pretty cool. Now they do give a uh, a, re- a way for Supergirl to interact with everybody else now, with um, Cisco actually making a device that actually allows her to contact not only contact but travel to their particular Earth. Which means crossovers just got easier. Basically, I still think it would be easier if they just said she was on their Earth, but whatever. <laughs> that's that's just me. Overall, I actually think this this was the actually the best episode of the whole um, crossover. Um, we got to learn a little bit more about the Dominators, and even though we still don't know, like you know, the the what were they trying to really take over, or they just were just trying to take out all the metahumans so they wouldn't have that problem. I don't know. But as far as, you know, tying up the stuff from the flash, they actually did a good job of that. So I enjoyed this episode the most out of all three of them. Your thoughts, Vicky? Um, well, I only, let me say this. I only watch flash. So I don't, I'm not invested in any of the other characters Mm -hmm. or anything. Um, so they were all pretty equal. I enjoyed each of them separately. Um, but overall, I enjoyed the uh, three episode and 50 second minute crossover. I think it was well done. They did a great job. Next yeah. time, throw in, um, you know, Supernatural, have Dean and Sam show up. You know they might do that. <laughs> some vampire diaries because that works because Dean and Sam hunt vampires and stuff anyway. Throw that in there. Put the frequency people going into the past through the radio. Throw them in there too. You could totally work it. I don't know. You think you can put Jane the Virgin or my crazy ex girlfriend in there somehow? But hey. Oh, so you just wanted to do an entire <laughs> a CW mashup? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just put everybody in everything. <laughs> that that would be crazy, funny to watch, but crazy. Um, that that being said, though, I I, I actually because I'm actually invested in um Flash and Legends of Tomorrow. I actually like the Legends of Tomorrow show. Um, I actually been liking that one since like midway through their first season. Um, and I just think like. Overall, I think it probably would have been a little bit better had we actually got a full four nights and you got more than just Supergirl showing up. Because it's basically three is three shows get starring Supergirl. And it didn't it didn't really feel like a crossover to me. But other than that, like seeing how they brought it together, it actually worked for, te- for television. It, it really did, in my opinion. Now, I know they're going to do this again next year, but next year, please, CW, don't 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 do what y'all did this year with claiming you had a four night crossover when it really was just three nights. All right. <laughs> Let's not do that. Let's actually add in, you know, the 
people from Supergirl, at least like Supergirl Wynn and um, her sister Alex. That way, at least we have a full on crossover as opposed to just like, because I don't even know where they can go with this from here, but I think that they're, they're probably thinking about that. So I'm pretty sure we're going to see them all crossover individually or, you know, for the big one again. Probably might even do it the second half of the season. We never know, knowing mm-hmm. them. But overall, I, I I enjoyed it. Um, I thought the Legends of Tomorrow uh, uh, episode actually brought it up for me. Um, but overall, eh, it was fun. It was a nice little three. It was a nice little three-hour movie, three-hour t- television movie, which usually is about what an hour. Because I think they're all like forty-five minutes. Yeah. So it winds up being like close to two hours. So I enjoyed it a little bit over two hours. I enjoyed it. Looking forward to some more shenanigans, as it were. Um, hopefully, uh, Cisco they they do something to ingratiate Cisco because right now I'm still I'm I'm so not like a Cisco still. I mean, I'm sure they'll get it together with Cisco. Yeah, he went. He's not a douche anymore. I mean, because it's kind of like what they did with Iris. Like the first season, I actually liked Iris the first half of the season, but the second half of season one, I hated her. <laughs> So they kind of <laughs> did that to Cisco for me. I'm like, dude, I'm freaking not liking you right now, dude. But like I said, I'm hoping that they actually, you know, uh, clear that stuff up with him at least. Uh, it looks like they're going to take that and step in the right direction going forward. And that's pretty much it. Now, this week is the season finale, the mid-season finales of uh, Flash, Arrow, and Legend of Tomorrow. So uh, we get to see what's going to – how they end off on a good note. Hopefully they all end off on a good note, story wise anyway. So anything you any last thoughts, Vicky, before we get out of here? Uh, I think it was an overall good job that they did. I look forward to uh any future crossovers. Yep. And with that being said, people, I hope you all enjoyed and we will see you guys again on the next episode of Fresh Take. Peace out. Toodles. <laughs>